Cultural Arts Center for our conversations and coffee on this 14th day of March, 2024. I'm Ellen O'Shaughnessy, coordinator of the program. We are delighted to have with us today Marjana, <laughs> curator of this exquisite loft gallery entitled Your Own Creative Voice. Marjana is an instructor here at our beloved Cultural Arts Center. And with Marjana, for our conversations and coffee presentations, today are her students, Sari Bello and Lori Stevenson. Wonderful. Both collage and mixed media artists. Other students in Marjana's class? Anybody here? Yes, no, 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 no. Ah, oh, how wonderful. Marjana, I have heard from so many of your students, including the ones I met at the opening, who said, what a great teacher you are, and how you so encourage and respect each of your students in their artistic expressions. Yeah, hmm? Yeah, isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Marjana shares with me that she is from Iran. She's Persian. She has a bachelor's degree in fabric and textile design and a master's degree in the restoration of historical and cultural objects. Wow, Marjana has more than 30 years of experience teaching different subjects at universities and colleges in Tehran. Her work has been in exhibitions in Tehran, Italy, and the United States. Marjana's moved to Columbus about four years ago and started to teach here at the Cultural Arts Center. She's been teaching many different art classes like surface design, batik, figure drawing, fiber art, watercoloring, and collage with mixed media as well. She's also done workshops on quilting, expressive drawing, and surface design. Her goal as a teacher is to encourage her students to explore their individual creativity. Wonderful. Saray. Saray Billow. Saray. Saray. Is a Columbus multimedia artist in the Black Lick area here in Columbus. She works out of her home studio. She was born in 1988 in San Diego, California. Saree's mother was serving in an active duty in the Navy. And Saree balanced her childhood, traveling between San Diego and Columbus. She and her mother moved to Columbus in 1997, and Saree spent four years studying arts. She graduated from Fort Hayes Metropolitan Education Center in 2006, and Sari took part in the Wexner Center for the Arts, Art and Ecology program under Shelley Casto during her senior year. She took part in the student art show at the Wexner Center for the Arts and the Schott Tower Gallery in the spring of 2006. She received her Associate of Arts degree from Columbus State Community College in 2009 and majored in art history at The Ohio State University and took studio art classes focused on the basics of art and design. She graduated with a Bachelor of Arts in 2012. In August of 2023, Sari was the awarded the Funds for Artist Grant from the Greater Columbus Arts Council. In February of 2024, she was the recipient of the Ohio Arts Council Grant for Arts with Disabilities. Sari has been focusing on healing, caring for her mental health. She's rediscovered and making art as a therapy. 
Cerise Art tells her story, that of an African-American woman growing up in the USA with mixed ancestry, healing from her trauma, and dealing with the history and folklore of her people. Her artwork is inspired by her life, family history, and education. The artwork of Lewis Nevelson, Amina Robinson, Georgia O'Keeffe, Frida Kahlo, and the writings of Maya Angelou, Nora Neal Hurston, and the music of Nina Simone. Ah. Hmm. Lori, Lori Stevenson, Ohio native, and has spent the last 30 years in Columbus. Her entry into the artistic world began with photography, originally working as a freelance sports and editorial photographer for a local newspaper in Columbus. Her experience as a photojournalist has been a significant influence in her approach to visual storytelling. Over the past several years, her photography has taken on a new depth, particularly in the use of multiple exposure and photo layering. Her multiple exposure photography work has been included in several exhibitions throughout Columbus. She is now learning multimedia collage techniques through classes at the Cultural Arts Center. Lori has participated in several classes at the center and learning how to apply paints, paper, and texture mediums to add more dimensions to her art. She's inspired by the creativity of her instructors and follow students who energize her to continue exploring and developing her own artistic vision. Ah, Marjana, Sari, Lori, take it away. <laughs> Aren't they amazing stories? Oh. Research and they're helping me put it together. <laughs> what a story for each of you. Thank you. Thank you. As my dear friend just introduced me, my name is Marjana Abbasi. I have years of experience of teaching different major in art, and uh, now I have a chance to uh, teach in here, and I'm so happy. It's something that uh, make my heart warm and stay in the Columbus. I like Columbus a lot. And uh, as she introduced me, uh, she said uh, everything. And uh, I have been started teaching here about four years ago and uh, teaching different major like surface design, fiber art, uh, figure drawing. And now I am teaching <coughs> Uh, collage and uh, watercolor. Uh, I have uh, done uh, some uh, workshop here, like uh, on quilting, fiber art, expressive drawing, surface design, and uh, the things. Uh, the other things that uh, I will be mention is that the style of my teaching. My goal as a teacher is to encourage my students to explore their creativity. I know each person is creative, and I want to help them to bring this creativity to the surface. That is really important for me. Especially for the, this major, it means mixed media. It's really important for them to be creative, learning different media and different techniques enable them to create their own and unique work that is not copy, it is for them. And then the more than important things in this area is they can communicate through their art to other artists, to other people, to show themselves, to be active, that is really important for me, especially in Cultural Arts Center. I know the goal of uh, all the principal is 
uh, uh, art uh, people who communicate with other artists. When they communicate through their art, they can find new ideas, uh, new, new uh, creativity, and more activity. That uh, is important. Unfortunately, after a semester, they think uh, it is, they are done. That is not. For me, in my opinion, is just started. It means they can now, they know what to do now, and they will have more and more the series of work that they can participate in many exhibitions. That is important. For mixed media in this uh, collage, they do not need uh, the background of art. I just need their, you know, something that is within them that exists that they, they should bring them up. You should ask how to motivate them. In order to motivate them, I understand my experience tell me that demonstration is so important. When I demonstrate for them with different, uh, you know, there is some the words that I really like it. That is, experience spontaneously with new materials and techniques that will help them, you know, when they observe me and, and see I am, I am doing this. And sometimes I do not know what the result would be. That is why they just observed me and uh, it helped them and encouraged them to do the same, to explore the, uh, another way. Uh, and I can say that sometimes I'm wondering, I do not know how they reach, uh, and I, I ask them, it is mutual relationship between my students and me. Uh, I give you the example. I give these two students, I give two students uh, crayon, and I told them to use it. One of them use it for uh, his big, uh, the city that uh, she already made, it is on the wall, and as a light, as a lightening of the city. And the other one create three small artwork that I will show you in another way. I, 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 mean, I mean the demonstration, motivate them to do more and more, and sometimes they teach me the new techniques and new styles. Although my uh, aim for this class is that having fun and uh, be relaxed. Besides, I teach them academic information like composition, like colors, how to match the colors, negative and positive space, uh, or balance, or how to develop their ideas that is important, that they are interested. For example, Katie, Katie uh, interest, uh, was interested in uh, butterfly. You can see four art of her uh, in the exhibition. He, she developed the idea. She learned how to develop it, how to uh, make uh, you know uh, the new. Uh, a style and how to use this idea to create uh, a piece of art. Martonic, have you seen examples of some of this? That would be wonderful. Actually, it is the last one and I will show you. Uh -huh. The last thing that I uh, want to tell you that it is a famous word that says that think and then uh, uh, the uh, famous word is think uh, before acting, but my philosophy of teaching, especially in this class, is act before thinking. It helps them to find, you know, they, they will follow their instinct 
when they do not think and they immediately go to work. That is really, really important. Now you can see some of my work. It is a uh, monotype. Yes, they are both in, uh, on fabrics. It is the freehand and use uh, acrylic ink and uh, reactive. This one is freehand on fabric again. Uh, it is the piece that I demonstrate uh, during the class. Uh, there, there is many techniques like resist, like crack, like wax, cold wax, uh, hot wax. Uh, it is marbling. Then on the surface, it is the ink. It is removing the color. It is monotype. It is two of my pieces that uh, 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 it is the series of work that I did it uh, with the adding fabric on it, uh, the silk. It is the papery silk on it, and uh, this one to use th thread on it. If you want to know that, I just put the color around it, and then with the hair dryer, uh, lead them to the center, and then again, uh, work on it. It has four, five layers. This is the lithography from 400 years ago that I uh, just uh, have a uh, composition and uh, have a digital print on uh, muslin and then add it to the, uh, and it is not even finished. I just do it for the uh, show to a students that the possibility of working. And I did it uh, for a students to use different material and uh, have a composition with different things that they can go to one piece as a group of things that they are match and have a balance. If you have a question, you can ask me, I am answering. This one was one, I was wondering, you know, it is the unprimed canvas, then it is the fa uh, paper uh, tissue, and uh, we just did it in a different, uh, in, in two years, I did it before, and I had this one, uh, and uh, I do the marbling, but because it has a sizing, uh, the, the fabric, uh, uh, the canvas, uh, it is not completely, you know, I didn't do, on purpose, it just happened. And I use it as a cave uh, on the water, you know, and then I color it. We made a different piece of paper with different techniques like uh, stamping, like stenciling, uh, and then uh, match it piece by piece together for one uh, artwork. It is the same, it is on canvas, and it is the, I, I just match the color and use, uh, you see the, if the, you, uh, if you see the, uh, the video that uh, uh, Jennifer, thank you for you to, to video us, and uh, it is over there, and you can see the example. This one is wonderful because I, I did it three years ago, uh, it was a unprimed canvas, I use a, white gesso, and then I attach uh, the canvas on it. And then ye years after I started, uh, I just put the, uh, use the spray uh, glue and attach this one to the surface and then color it. And it's just, and take out, uh, it is like a uh, net. Yes. It is the same, the, the use the resist. Uh, look at this one. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Cherry is not here. She's so creative and so good. Uh, I didn't know what, what I'm doing. I just put the uh, 
white glue on the surface of uh, canvas and then dry it and then put the first uh, white glue and then white gesso and then dry it and then uh, wet it and use the ink, uh, acrylic ink and we have a wonderful uh, texture over there that they can uh, again can work on it. It means, I, I didn't, when I started to do it, I haven't done uh, before. I just match it uh, at the time. This is my student's work, and uh, they, she made the different pieces, and she started to uh, attach them, and you know, it, it, it's, it's the process of working uh, to how to match many uh, things together to find one piece that is finished. This uh, a woman, I, do not, I don't remember uh, her name, uh, he didn't do uh, anything during the eight uh, sessions. At the, at the last session, <laughs> he just come up with the watercolor uh, and started to, you know, I started to go for it uh, and, and just do one of the flower. And she come up with all the uh, idea, and I am proud of them. Uh, they are so creative, all of them. Believe me. Let's call on two of your students, these creative students, huh? They are so yeah. good. So Maybe. good. They, How about they're coming forward to carry out your mission as teachers, huh? What? Well, let's have uh, yes. Sarid and Laurie come yes, forward. Come to forward. Yeah, because that, that was wonderful as you are talking about your students. We'll bring two more in. Yes, they are so good. All right, Sarah, how about your coming through? I keep Lori's first. <laughs> you want Lori's first? Lori first. Okay. Yeah. Look at this one. She interested in the faces and do it with the with the air dry clay. Yeah, clay. Clay. And she just like flowers. All of them just follow their interest to create uh, new pieces, and that is why they are so uh, independent and work. I, I, when, I, uh, when I demonstrate, they just absorb it and just follow, they explore another way of uh, thinking. It, uh, it is for um, Katie. I told you that she just come up with new idea and how to develop it. It takes time until uh, she just come up with this idea and composition. One of them that uh, she, she was not in my class anymore, but she make a, a sketchbook for this college, and she made lots of good things. Unfortunately, I called her. I couldn't contact uh, with her. Uh, she was. Uh, she has some more. I think. Look at this. She did a really nice job for her sketchbook. This is for four years. Three years ago or four years ago, uh, she did it, and I didn't know she'll teach me how to do it. It is the marbling, but uh, she used some uh, material to move this marbling uh, and make this kind of uh, pattern. So, can we have Marie and Lori's work? Are they going to? Yes, they are. From it? Yes, okay. they are. Okay, because time is. Uh, Moving along. Here. Okay, thank you, Louis. Oh, great. Okay, thank you. Thank you, and teacher. Great. Thanks, Ellen. Um, it's going to get complicated here. All right, I think I'm ready. Marjana, thank you. I will just echo what's already been said. Not only is she an amazing artist, but she's an very inspirational instructor, and um, she's also honest with her feedback, and I think that's how we learn and grow as artists, so thank you very much for everything. I'm going to talk a little bit about 
my work, I'm, I'm fairly new to this medium. I think I've been taking classes for maybe about a year and a half. So I consider myself in the experimental phase right now. <laughs> Ultimately, as Ellen said in my bio, I'd like to be able to integrate my photography with multimedia work. I'm not there yet, but that's what I aspire to. Um, so right now I'm just dabbling and having fun and being creative and not trying to overthink what I'm doing. So I like urban, I like a little bit of everything, so I don't know if any fellow Gemini's in the house, but I'm like all over the map when it comes to what I like and what I do, and I could be doing totally different things, and I'm okay with that. Um, I like urban landscapes very much, so with this particular piece, this is um, the Columbus skyline <laughs> in a somewhat abstract way. Um, but I love the idea of texture, so you know I'll share some of my techniques. Uh, quite honestly, I've worked with uh, spackling paste, so if anybody wants to add textural elements to their work, spackling compound is <laughs> a great choice and it's cheap. And so I created the texture with that. Um, and as Marjana said, we were just goofing around one day. This sat uh, for a few months, and then we started to play with crayons, and I figured out, okay, that's how I can add the light and dimension to this. So I'm in my crayon phase, but that's how I got the splashes of color and figured out if I use a hot gun. Um, crayon. The crayon is completely throughout, so anything that's got color to it um, is crayon. And... I figured out how to meld it, but preserve some of the shape to it. So I'm in my crayon phase right now, which you'll see. How did you do that? Did you put it, the crayon actually in the glue gun? Or? No, I actually used a cheese grater, you know, high tech, and just put my shavings, got the colors I wanted, sprinkled them on, and then took the hot, hot gun to it from the top down, and it just kind of spread. Saray is going to talk about her technique, which is completely different, but I found this worked for me. And then um, this one right here is just really a small prototype of the big one, and I figured I wanted to experiment with some techniques before I screwed up my very large piece. So, you know, when it came to the finishes and things that I wanted to do, I'd use this as kind of my test canvas before I did anything on the larger one. And then the one beside it, same concept, some string, paper, texture, and then crayons again. I thought, give it that little pop of color with the red and white. Any comments, any questions? Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, similar technique here as well. This was actually inspired by a photograph. I am doing some drone photography, and I was in Iceland. You know, because if you're going to learn to fly a drone, you might as well go someplace cool, right? So I was in Iceland, and they had these beautiful braided river corridors and just amazing landscape. And so this was inspired by one of those photos. It looks nothing like the photo, but at least it was a start for me to try and take it in the direction of where I want to go. Um, but similar techniques with paint, paper, string. This is... Uh, if anybody's, you know, your bargain bin Halloween spider stuff that you throw on your bushes, <laughs> and that's, that's what that is. Um, so just playing around with those techniques and, What's yeah. What's the scale of the work? What, what's the size? Um, this one is out in the hall. The, um, the big Columbus cityscape is probably three and a half feet. I like big art pieces, and I cannot lie. I like big art. Um, this one's a smaller scale. Again, just trying to kind of play with techniques before I blow it up to a larger canvas. What, what color do you like in there? I, I, the blue really sticks out. I like the blue. It's a nice, warm feeling. Thank you. I like the blue as well. I just like that pop from it. And then, again, kind of at the last minute. And I like that little bit of green down on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The blue is a what, what, what type of feelings does that give you? Um, like I said, it doesn't resemble the photo in any way, shape, or form. So it's, but it's kind of got a life of its own. And for me, it's, it does represent water and kind of the intersection of that. Um, the photo that I have is kind of where the rivers meet. So that's kind of the feel that I get from it. I do like it, but this one's relatively small compared to some of the other ones. This is quite large. This is maybe four feet. This is also out in the hallway here. 
Um, this is a complete departure from, you know, what I was doing. And interestingly, I was taking a stained glass class. I still am. And so I think that was influencing my thought process a little bit. And I thought, I always start out with the same color palette. And I thought, I'm going to do something completely different, switch gears. And so I just went for a color explosion. Um, and this is just all, this is pretty simple. There's a little bit of paint, primarily paper. Uh, the lines were done with like artist tape. So it was not necessarily complicated, but I, I just wanted to do something completely different. And interestingly, I think all of us as artists, so this is now influencing my work in stained glass. So I'm gonna try and I'm working on a piece of this in uh, stained glass format. And I'm also taking jewelry making. I'm here a lot. I love this place. Um, I'm, I'm taking jewelry making as well. So I'm hoping that I can transfer some of this design concept into the metalwork as well. So we'll see. But it's interesting how you start working in one area and then it starts influencing how you work in different areas as well. Um, the one thing that I want to mention, and I'm about ready to wrap up here, um, I believe in repurposing materials. I really want to be a sustainable artist, so some, some may give me you know, a side eye for that, but I do look for canvases as like thrift stores and secondhand stores, and I take them and I repurpose them and rework them and try and use sustainable materials, so that's really important to me. This was, a, this was a freebie that one of my neighbors was getting rid of, and I'm like, I'll take that canvas and do something with it. So um, that's one thing that's just kind of part of my philosophy is trying to be as sustainable as possible. This is another example. This is a large clock <laughs> that I found at the thrift store. It was a fairly nice clock, but I thought, hmm, I'm going to do something different with that. So I kind of stripped off, took off uh, the hands, obviously, and I painted it, and Marjana was very helpful to me in this, really kind of helping me think through the vision. And it finally came together as the map of the world, and it includes a lot of burnt elements, like papers, letters, photos, postcards. Um, I did it at home, Todd. I'm not, not, you can't burn things in the, in the yeah. workshop. <laughs> Learned that, that, that is frowned upon. So I did a lot of that at home. So many of these pieces have like burnt edges. They're rough. And quite honestly, it's just kind of how I'm feeling about the state of the world right now. It's beautiful, but it's uh, in distress. And especially with respect to global warming and things that are important to me. So that's kind of what I was going for. I don't know that you can necessarily see it. Maybe you can't on the photos. Um, I had the hands just kind of laying there and numbers scattered about. So I have to figure out exactly how to finish it. I thought it could be a working clock, but then I thought, I don't know if that really represents what I'm going for. So I'll probably just place the, the hands and numbers kind of randomly, disheveledly on this work and finish it up. But it's sitting, waiting for that last bit of inspiration. And then um, my final piece is, um, this is intended to be a series of three pieces, and I call it metamorphosis. And it's, it's really about um, people who put on armor. I mean, this is a female form, so I was thinking about women, but it doesn't necessarily have to be women, necessarily. But how we build up this armor over time to protect ourselves, those around us, um, protect ourselves from our environment, our circumstances, whatever. Um, and how, you know, sloughing that off can liberate like who you truly are, the beauty within. So honestly, this is kind of the middle piece where there's some armor left and things emerging. And I just have to figure out how to finish it off. And this was one where I had the first piece started and Marjana thought it looked a little costumey. And she was very candid with me and I agreed. So I'm rethinking how I approach this series. It's sitting now, but it will come to me. I think like all of us, sometimes you just gotta put it aside and you wait for that inspiration to come or that technique to come or something comes to you and you're like, ah, this is how I can bring it down the home stretch. So I'm waiting, but it will happen. And I think that's it. I'm gonna pass it over to Sarai. Thank you. Hello, again, my name is Sari Bello. Um, I am a fairly new re-entering artist. I 
background originally, of course, I went to Fort Hayes, so I kind of was in the art community, stepped away, worked in the corporate world, fell out of that, and came back back to the art world. Um, my artwork is inspired a lot. Um, while I've been healing from my journey of life, I've also been rediscovering my roots and my history. Um, my family originates from um, Georgia as well as Louisiana, so there's a lot of Creole as well as um, basic just African-American folklore in my work. Um, these were inspired by two African deities, um, Oshan and um, Yemiya, yay is how you say her name, um, but it also was inspired by mermaids. I was born by the sea, I live, want to go back and live by the sea, um, so I actually started the one, this one at home, and they're styrofoam wig heads that I covered and painted. And um, each element represents the element of the African deity, as well as connecting it to the water and um, the daughter and the mother. It's why it's called daughter and mother. It kind of morphed into becoming looking more like me and my mother because this, and she, she was in the Navy. She always was out at the sea, so that kind of resonated with me. Um, this is mostly, the background is mostly fabric and paint and broken seashells. Um, I made the background, the dirt, I wanted to make red because the dirt in Georgia is extremely red and will dye your fingers and stuff. So that's, when I think of dirt, I immediately think of red. Um, these were just more inspirations things. Um, I made this piece for my cousin for her graduation. Um, using the techniques that um, Marjana taught us in class. Um, there's multiple layers. I take pictures from um, history. Uh, I collect all kind of images and things that I like. I really like faces. Faces really resonate with me, um, as well as history and colors. Um, these two pieces, I started at home and brought them in. I, again, with the sea, I really like jellyfish and um, coral reefs. I also am very much passionate about clean oceans, clean coral. The coral dies, it turns white. That's really what inspired like this idea of this multicolored, like the coral, when it starts to die, it becomes, it loses, it's like that rainbow color that it has and it turns like this sickly kind of like yellow greeny kind of white to it. So I kind of wanted to like capture that feel, but also still keep the texture that is in the coral. And so this is all air dry clay that I modeled and textured. It's the pieces out there. Um, I stuck seashells in it. Um, the octopus are made out of paper and acrylic ink, or I'm sorry, the jellyfish are made out of paper and acrylic ink. Um, this piece over here, um, I, again, I collect a lot of images, a lot of historical images, and I was inspired by his, it sounds interesting as more than what it is. There was a movement on social media called Cottage Core, and it was people being really interested in like the late 1800s, this idea, you know, the cottage life, fairy tale life, yes. I, I like the, um the 3D was the blue, was the um, jellyfish. That it really has a really nice 3D. Yeah, it's so I took acrylic, um, acrylic gloss medium, and I piled them into the shape, and then I laid the. It's actually tissue paper that I painted, hand colored, and I laid it on top, so that way it still kept the dome shape but it also still gave more of a see-through iridescent look, like a jellyfish. And then the deepness of the blues and all that, that's got really, it's got a really deep, you Cause, feel like you're in the deep. Right, because the deeper you get in the ocean, the darker it gets. It, the light can't reflect the farther down you go, which is usually why jellyfish are also transparent. Right. Little bubbles coming mm -hmm. up in the weeds. Mm -hmm. That's not these fabric. Yes, yes, the background, 
of this piece is fabric. I hand dyed, she taught us how to do um, resist with wax and I hand dyed this fabric. I didn't have, I didn't have an idea for it. I just did the blue to like, cause I was like, I know I'm gonna use it in this kind of theme. And then I just cut it up and ripped it up and glued it on top of each other and kind of in a stripe pattern. So that way the white part still showed and it still gave movement like the way the water moves. Um, so, and then this piece over here, which is over there, it's about 24 inches by 24 inches. And I just took a, a um, piece of wood and I did about three layers of gesso as well as school glue. I used the crack, the crackle um, method that she taught us. So um, I put on a layer of white glue. Before that dried, I put a layer of, I used acrylic, white acrylic paint on top. And then before it fully dried, and then as it dro dried, the glue separated and it caused the acrylic paint on top to separate. And so you got a really nice, like this really nice crackle effect like in here and in here. Cause I wanted this to look like a wall slash, like like you stumbled across your grandmother's old, um, like her vanity and she had all these pictures. Uh-huh. That reminds me of old tin pipes. Yes. You know, you've got the, um, the copper around. Yes. And you, you look at old tin pipes. And yes. You, you know, it's kind of, looks like you're going into your family history. Yes. I actually have, that's actually one of the things that inspired me. I have a old, like an old lithium print of my great aunt when she was two years old. It was like 1921. And so you can tell it originally came in a copper um, frame. And on some of these pieces, like the original, the reason why I kept it the copper is because you can tell in the picture when they scanned it, the photo frame, like this one, it was put in a copper frame. And so I don't know why they used copper the way they did back then, other than it being readily available. So I wanted to keep that look. I wanted to make it look old. And then I added um, lace, because I don't know, everything from back then during that time when you find like old Victorian jewelry and like mourning pieces, a lace, copper, uh, patina, very old feeling. So I wanted to like do that in this piece and keep it that way. And uh, it was very nice. The artist on the resident artist, she gave me these beautiful prints of these flowers that just added exactly what I needed for this piece. Are those people in your family? No, they're just, I have a book of... Uh, that question? Are these people your family? Yes. No, they're not my family. They are just, I have a lot of historical photos of African Americans throughout history, good and bad. And I really like seeing old pictures of us looking like everyday life, like anybody else in the world would have looked at that time period. So I'm very interested in portraying that. And then these, <laughs> these are the crown pieces. So what I did, she showed us, Marjana showed us how to melt crown onto paper and then use that paper for backgrounds. I wanted to carve into it because I knew with it being wax, you can build it up and then you can carve on it, but I couldn't do it on the paper. So instead, I actually um, shaved with a pencil or with a pencil sharpener crowns in a like not even in a pattern just all over the these canvas boards and then I took I did one where this one I did with I took a piece of wax paper put it on top and then ran an iron a regular household iron on top and it melted the colors it blended the colors and then it lifted in some areas but what I liked is that it stained the canvas board behind it and then these two pieces I did the same thing where I shaved, 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 and then I used the heat gun to melt it. And so they were like, 
it didn't take away any of it. So it was a nice thick layer of crayon wax. And then I covered this one in acrylic ink and I took, <laughs> I took a screw, no, a nail, it was a gold nail. I took a nail and I scratched this feather pattern into the board directly. And it's, it's hanging out there, so it'll definitely show you, but it gives this, it gives it a really realistic feather feel to it. Like it's very fine, like a feather, like it looks like I dipped in paint and just kind of like dragged it across the canvas. But yeah, it's all just Crayola crowns. Yeah, I burnt my finger doing it too. So I really, really like this piece. Comments? Any questions? Those pieces are beautiful. The feathers, the feather pieces are really very, very nice. Bev, do you want to say that louder there? Your feather pieces are really nice. I don't know that she's hearing me. The feather yes. pieces. Yes, my feather, the last ones, yeah. I they're not really big. It's, it's kind of funny. The pictures make them look way bigger because the purple piece is only like eight by eight and the other two are like 12 by 12. Um, but I think they look so nice when they hang together. They kind of remind me of like the seasons individually. So I kind of kept the color pattern and kind of like leaves slash feathers. I really love the way that you incorporated shells into your work too. I'm a collector of shells and stones. Yes. I, so I'm really into like nautical stories and I have been studying because I kind of have an idea I want to do a whole show around mermaid and nautical stories um, because every culture all over the world has a story connected to the sea in some way and so my thing was is that like the little mermaid had just came out and everybody was up in arms because she was going to be a black mermaid and people were like there's no black mermaids and I was like that's not true <laughs> that's not true at all like there's a very deep history and folklore connected to just water and the idea of like how we are connected to it even down to like child birthing so I'm always like very interested in mythology and fairy tales from all over in folklore. So it it kind of plays a part in my art, even if I didn't really, I didn't have any plans for all this. All of this art that I made completely just came to me as I was doing it. I don't, I drive her crazy. I never have a plan. I just listen to what she tells me and then I just go and I do it. And at the end, this is what we get. <laughs> Yes. Well, shall yes. we go out to the gallery there? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I want to. Yes, that's the plan. And that's why I wanted to, I'm sticking, continuing with her, is to hopefully there'll be mixed media and painting. Well, I started the, uh, the piece of the moth in Marjana's class when we were doing uh, direct dye with the fiber reactive dyes on a stretched piece of fabric. And I just kind of painted it in to begin with and then uh, went back later and used colored markers, uh, permanent markers to you know, bring out some of the shapes in the, in the um, kind of the fur, you might say, of the, of the moth or butterfly and the, the wing details, that sort of thing. Uh, I like your discord is so, so much. Oh, thank you. It has a different uh, technique. Just uh, yes, it, it has quite a few techniques. It started with a, a piece of unprimed canvas in the background. It has acrylic paint that was just smeared on with a, um, like a, a flat rubber spatula almost. Um, and then on top of that, I put some hand-dyed fabrics. There are three pieces up there, actually. Uh, the, this piece is actually a photocopy of the hand-dyed fabric because I didn't want to cut the fabric. It was, I had made it qu many years ago and just was waiting for the right moment or what to do with it, you know. So, um, and then this was a piece of hand-dyed fabric that I had done in a dyeing class. And then this piece was also done in the dyeing class. 
that you can just barely see. Um, and uh, these were done as a, uh, I had taken a photograph of some wings, enlarged it, and printed it on this fabric many years ago and didn't know exactly what to do with it. Um, and then these I made in Marjana's class with, um, I think we just used the uh, d uh, direct dyes on that one as well, and uh, maybe some um, permanent um, blocks. It was the blocks of color. So, in, yeah, and then these are actually pieces of a, an, an antique, antique calendar that was made out of a little bitty blind, it was like a little blind, it's wood, yes, wood slats <coughs> that were hand painted, and I think it maybe was from Korea or something because of the scene that happened to be on it, but I just took the slats out, and so uh, the, just the bits of color uh, were echoed in, in everything else. So um, just a matter of uh, arranging a composition with those different components. And then down at the other end here, I did these two pieces. Um, the top one was done on a map, just a AAA map, with um, some uh, gesso over the top of it, and then um, different um, inks is what, what was used on this. And it was uh, stamped as well uh, to make the butterfly. And then this one down here is actually just a sheet of regular tissue paper that you would wrap a present with on the inside of a box. So, uh, and that was dyed with uh, the fiber reactive dyes. So it ended up, you know, bleeding some as well as um, the, the crinkly. It was kind of tricky to mount it because it was so crinkly. Uh, well, <coughs> excuse me, I just used, I ended up gluing, I think, in the middle and worked or from one side to the other. Yeah, just glue. Yeah. The color and it just bled. It just bled, but then when it got glued down to the background, it was just, just regular glue, you know. I just, I tried to, mm -hmm, Elmer's glue. Yeah, just very carefully because it's it's not exact, you know. So I tried to figure out about where the edges should be and then lined it up as best I could. <laughs> no going back. No, not with a sheet of tissue paper. <laughs> so, but we'll uh, all, right? all uh, butterflies. So. Okay. So this is the uh, abstract, somewhat abstract Columbus skyline that I talked about. I got the texture from using uh, wall spackling paste, so that's how I built the texture and the outline. And then this sat for a while until we discovered how to use crayons and melt crayons. And that was the final kind of pop that I felt this needed. So all of the color dots are melted crayons that I think kind of brings, brings the image to light. I also used some crayon um, texture both on the skyline and here on the water as well just to give it a little bit of dimension and feel. So that's this piece. And then do you want me to talk about the other one? So I'll just talk about this piece quickly on the top here. Um, this is a fairly simple use of techniques, primarily paper, some acrylic paint, and also the use of artist tape to create the black outlines. I'm kind of influenced right now by some work that I'm doing in a stained glass class here, so I think that's why this has a little bit more of a geometric feel versus abstract. And I'm hoping to actually transfer some of these design ideas into some of the stained glass work that I'm doing right now. Um, so just kind of transferring those concepts and ideas across different media. So this is mine. And then I think Saray is going to talk. She's got the one down here. So this is um, the mother-daughter piece that I made. These are wig heads, styrofoam wig heads that I've covered in acrylic paint as well as um, what's the name of it? It's plaster cast wrap. Yeah. And so I created the hair from real peacock feathers on this 
I incorporated the shells as well and the red slash brown dye um, to create the dirt. And then if you want to travel over here, I can show you my crown work. So these are my crown pieces. I, you can see the texture from scratching into the, into the actual medium. I just shaved down a bunch of Crayola crowns and then melted them with wax paper on top because the wax paper wouldn't stick to the crowns. And it lifted in some areas. It created like a really hard like surface for me to take the nail and scratch on. So I was able to just lightly scratch out this feather uh, motif. And underneath it, where the crowns had been sitting longer, it dyed the canvas board so there was still color underneath it, so it's not completely white. One thing about Marjana, I will say, she's very supportive of her students. Like this whole exhibition, she's been very adamant that it's about us. So I appreciate that. Well, bravo. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.